Hello, everyone. Welcome to Spirit Sessions of View of the Light. We love you, our family, and we're glad to be with you each and every week, whether it's on Facebook or on YouTube. So please share this video out. You know that when you share the video out each week, one of us will pick a winner and you will win a free session with one of us. It's always so much fun and we love you and we like to give back this way. So hit the subscribe button over there on YouTube, hit the like button and share it out and comment. Where are you coming in from and how you've been doing? What, what helps me know a lot of things is my friend Janelle. She's a friend of all three of us and we were all three in the same class together. This is where we met, but who knew how far we would go? What kind of things would happen to us then? Janelle has always been a source of deep cosmic information for me. Things I wouldn't even know how to put words on. And this is why I just have such a special spot in my heart. And I'm sure Bex Marie and Rhonda Elliott do too, because we wanted to have you back on our show. So much is going on, Janelle. We need to check in with you. So what is this, the rise of the divine feminine and the 13th gate you are sharing with us? This sounds pretty interesting. And you're starting the gate already? Yes. Uh, so basically this Stargate that we're approaching is actually connected back to 2012. Uh, so it's, it's really, uh, it's about the 13th gate is about the divine feminine, uh, more of an anchoring of that, more of an integration. So kind of everything that, uh, we knew, uh, back in 2016, 2020 um, was going to be a pinnacle point. I was given the date uh, 21st of the 12th, 2019 was kind of the start of the shift of that. Um, so we knew 2020 was going to be crazy. Uh, there were certain things that I had that information shared back with me. I actually saw uh, in in dream time and I'm, I'm trying to think when that was but it, it was around uh when president trump first became um when he first became president i was showing that this timeline i and that's the thing we can't uh we're not given linear time because it's not about linear time it's always about timelines so therefore um wasn't really sure what year that would occur but we knew 2020 was the pinnacle year for the changeover um so yeah so in regards to i was shown kind of the timeline of the riots like and i don't like to call them riots i like to because that's how my spirits give me the civil unrest and what i was shown in dream time is exactly what occurred pretty well um, and when you're having those lucid dreams, you're actually there in that timeline experiencing it. So for me, I was actually in that timeline. I was uh, hiding underneath buildings, running down streets, um, viewing uh, a police officer being gunned down in a big square, um, which, and the reason what I was given for that was because the people had lost uh, faith in the establishment. So I wasn't given, you know, what happened prior to that. I was just given what was going to happen due to the people losing faith. So, um, so I, I've just gone kind of somewhere else totally straight away. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, Janelle, before, before you, because, you know, we, we get into these rabbit holes and it's great with, doing that with you. But just tell us just a wee bit about yourself and where you are located because not everybody knows who you are because we've got new viewers out here on Spirit Sessions. So just give us a little, you know, FYI or what is it, 411 about Janelle Cameron. Uh, I guess uh, for me, I like as you guys know, I used to do my own lives. I actually have gone, uh, I've gone into my own bunker for some time, which we 
we do uh, through the ascension process in regards to what we're integrating ourselves. So what I used to do, um, which I will be returning to, I'll be doing my own weekly sessions where basically I'm just talking about the pinnacle points that are coming up and assisting others navigate their individual ascension journeys and also I'll be talking about the collective energy, trying to put it into perspective of um, what's playing out on the stage because basically what's happened is this has already occurred. As we know, um, you know, there's, there's no space and time. So we can connect with the future, the past, anytime if we have that ability, if we've acted those abilities. So what we're experiencing now has already been created by our collective consciousness and it has now been anchored in the physical so that we can view it, observe it, have the awareness of where all the disconnection, where the separation is that we're holding individually as a collective. So we can deconstruct it and, and kind of concurrently um, because, you know, we get to a level where we're working quantum is we're also creating the new timelines. So we're constantly creating, we're constantly deconstructing. So that is why it kind of can feel very confusing is because people are pretty well uh, navigating between 3D, 4D and 5D. Um, and we do it simultaneously. Now it depends where each sits and their level of awareness, their level of consciousness, how much trauma that they have resolved within themselves is where they will actually navigate, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it so also is planetary alignment because mm -hmm. during different planetary alignments, we can connect much easier with the higher timelines, with the higher stargates. So, you know, that's when those galactic activations, which we are in the gate now, uh, the 13th gate, which I was talking about, that's when we can actually... And it's all choice points. You know, we each individually choose and we collectively choose. So the thing is the ones that have actually resolved more trauma, more separation within themselves because it's, it's like upgrades, they hold a more significant... Uh, trying to think of the word for it, uh, pull, if that makes sense. So therefore, um, the higher timeline is anchored and then individually each needs to move into that once they're ready. So when you're talking about timelines and shifting timelines, is it because we shift our perceptions or we shift our... Say we, consciousness. we heal ourselves, our consciousness, and then yes. we should, it's like a butterfly effect. So when we change, things change. Is that how it works? It, yeah, it's choice points. So therefore, what will happen when we're playing in duality, and when I say we're playing in duality, our, our awareness is actually staying in the lower realms, mm -hmm. say in the 3D, 4D realms, when our awareness and our consciousness actually um, affixes to those timelines, that's where we operate from. So when we actually choose the higher timeline and we can observe, we can, we can look at what's happening on the world stage and say, okay, this is, this is very sad what's playing out. It's necessary for our evolution as a... Uh, as a species, as, as, you know, people, as a collective, um, we can have the awareness, and this is how we deconstruct. We have the awareness, we view it, we don't attach to it. So we don't attach to that reality, if that makes sense. Yeah. So then what happens is we deconstruct that, that division, that separation within ourselves, but once we do it for ourselves, we're also doing it for the collective consciousness. So as each chooses to actually crumble that old reality, uh, deconstruct that stargate, 
it's no longer held within us, that separation, but also it's actually, uh, it's crumbling the old structure of the collective as well, which is all comes back to geometrics. It's a lot of very interesting so, stuff. Yeah. Really fascinating and deep because I think, you know, from, from my perspective, what I'm trying to understand, I guess, is how we can observe without getting connected to it, how we can observe without becoming emotionally invested in what's happening. I think that's been my biggest sticking point is seeing what's going on on the world yeah. stage and not feeling an emotional, like I get very emotional very easily. So how can we observe without emotionally attaching, without becoming attached to the story or you know what we're being fed? It's practice, it, it truly is practice. It's actually um, remaining conscious in every moment. So um, understanding that when we get emotionally invested, we're being triggered. If we're, if we're actually having an emotional reaction, mm -hmm. that's a trigger for us. So catching that trigger before it actually takes hold. Mm -hmm. um, also, another really good thing is to always, always hold in your consciousness that we live in duality. This mm -hmm. earth the way it is at the moment is a duality, is a polarity. Um, the polars are shifting mm -hmm. and, and we do that. We are shifting that as a collective. So remembering that uh, we are all one, but we are individual expressions of the one. Mm -hmm. um, we will, certain things will come up that will trigger, will trigger some more than others. And that's because there has been some experience, uh, you know, in their lineage or past lives, um, that trauma will hold more on to us. So, you know, as you guys know, I'm a, how I've done a lot of my stuff is through my ability to actually see past lives mm -hmm. and dissolve my trauma uh, through past lives. And so kind of, you know, that's what I've always done in my sessions is uh, with people is actually assist them to resolve their traumas because it's a big thing of ascension is dissolving those uh, traumas that we hold within, which quite often are attached to our early life experiences. Uh, well, actually not just our early life, but all our experiences in, in this incarnate, but also those experiences are quite often tied into our past lives. And what I'm actually, uh, a point that I really want to um, highlight at the moment, because this is, this is what happens is we highlight things. At the moment, the collective is highlighting the separation with uh, inequality. Mm -hmm. So what we need to remember is when we're, when we're seeing that, what we're experiencing and what we're doing now is a core wound. Now, that core wound, we can say it's equality between races. Mm -hmm. Dig deeper, it's actually the core wound always comes back to the separation from our God self, mm -hmm. from um, when we separated from creator. So all these programs and all this, uh, you know, we have – we have kind of one agenda being played out as in, uh, say, a group that doesn't want the ascension to progress. We have them providing situations such as, you know, fear programs, separation programs of black against white, uh, you know, um, this has been playing out so long. The women's lib movement was was actually uh, instigated from the same person, mm -hmm. well, the same group. Uh, so it's actually, you know, it's all programmed to trigger that core wound. But the polarity of that, so we can we can look at that as in, say, the negative polarity of what's playing out, but the higher polarity of that, which you know, duality, 
is the higher polarity is we flip everything and we have gratitude, we have compassion because everyone's playing their roles. Now, if they did not do that, humanity, the collective, would not have awareness that that is where we need to shift our consciousness from. Right. You know, that... So it's really highlighting uh, the fact of the separation mm -hmm. where it's been created through the sexes, through politics, through races, um, geez, you know, their, uh, religion. Yeah. So there's all these dualities playing out to separate people from their God self. And so 2020, we're going to experience a lot of it. Mm -hmm. So all those things are going to come up to clear yeah. Uh, and deconstruct. So it is really important that people realise the the duality in both of that, you know, the, the dark and the light because we're bringing it all back into balance and we can't do that if we're not aware of the deconstruction that is occurring. So, and as I said, we're doing all this simultaneously, like, um, you know, this is why I kind of stopped. I, I didn't feel aligned with the energy reports anymore because uh, this can happen in a day that mm -hmm. things flip. So, you know, I might do an energy report for a week and then all of a sudden, bam, um, we've got a new timeline that we're traversing. So you don't have to feel any bad. The weather guys mm -hmm. can't do any better. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. At least she's more accurate than them. But I think, yeah. you know, so basically 2020 is a purging of all the things that are unhealed within us in the collective and it's all coming up and that's what we have you know that's really just kind of like a big dumping of recognition and awareness so that we can dive in you know bring it up recognize yep. it and then get back into connection with our higher selves connection with source connection with each other well basically the the polarity of so we the lower polarity is separation which we've been existing in the higher polarity of that is unity so, um, you know, and, and around these gateways, and this is a big one. This is, uh, you know, this is midpoint. Yeah. So uh, what I would suggest is, is for people, um, and, you know, they might want to come together, but a lot of people, what I noticed in the last gateway uh, was the triggering in the collective. It's necessary because people need to be triggered in order to release if they're not doing this consciously. So what I noticed was I went online, I would say one kind of comment and I would just, it was like I'd put a bomb in there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people were like just being triggered like crazy. And like a statement that I made was we're not black or white, we're beings of light. And that triggered the bejeebus out of people. I was like, wow. I um, I was quite blown away. I'm like, and the thing is, we get to a point in um, our evolution where, where we're not absorbing everything, where we are just the observer and we can step back and see what's happening. People are very triggered by that because they feel like we've lost our empathy, which we haven't, you know, we still hold that empathy. We're just no longer, uh, uh, we're no longer an anchor point for the misery, if that mm. makes sense. Yeah. What we do, we go in, we show awareness, we transmute instead of absorbing it. Right. So, yes. but people are very triggered by that because they actually feel that, well, where's your empathy? You could, and this is when they'll go into judgment. Mm -hmm. um, they'll be like, and you call yourself a light worker. I'm seeing a lot of that go on. Like people really need to actually step away from that and understand that a, like many of us are at all different levels and many of us have different roles and our roles change depending on what's needed at the pinnacle point. Mm -hmm. So, um you know, the core wounding is when people are going to go into reaction mode a lot more. 
And so 2020, yeah, we're, we're really working on the collective core wounds. Mm -hmm. And when we say collective, what a lot of people don't realise is we hold it all within us, the elements, we hold nature, um, you know, mother is part of us. So there is no separation in any of it. We're one with the animals, we're one with the plants, we're one with uh, the elements. You know, I realised, um, I'm trying to think when it was, one day I was just sitting out and, uh, you know, with nature and I've realised that I held all the elements within me and it was kind of like, I kind of knew I did, but it was more like, bam, mm -hmm. you, you are the sun, you are the thunder, you are the wind, you are the air, you know, you're all of it. Mm -hmm. And it was such an exciting, it was kind of like, uh, it was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I started playing with it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to move these clouds. Um, I'm going to do this and I'm going to clear. And, and we've been doing this um, unconsciously for some time as in being able to shift the environment around us. But it was kind of like the real conscious realisation of, right, okay, I've got some dark stormy clouds over here, not really liking the energy there. I'm going to move that on. And it's, um, yeah, it's cool. Sounds very cool. And we all have that ability, though. It's just, you know, the awareness. It's yeah. the awareness of what we're able to do. And obviously, if, so if you're we're... Need... Sorry. No, no. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. Sorry. Yeah. Obviously, if we're, uh, if we're doing it for malevolent purposes, well, we'll get a swift kick up the bum. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's always staying in integrity and, um, you know, when you're doing things like that. So it's just clearing density. So if we have the, if we have the pure intention of where we're clearing the density, you know, we'll be able to do that mm -hmm. with practice, with practice. Everything's with practice. Mm -hmm. It's like Merlin. I was just thinking that. I just totally had Merlin pop in my head right before you said that. I love it. That's great. <laughs> you know, you're going to be starting up a new show. What What's it going to be about? Like, so you said it's about the pinnacle point. So you're going to, are you going to have guests on or are you going to just talk about what you see coming up in the next week? You know, like points where people can make a choice or whatever. I'd really... Uh... I'd really like to actually start because this is, you know, this is where we're going. Um, another reason, I guess, why I actually went off the lives was because um, I was kind of no longer aligned just with doing it with me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and this is what we're doing. We're coming together because we all have different ingredients to share. And when we talk about them um, together, it'll spark kind of other, you know, more expansion. So when you're just there on your own, uh, bringing, you know, your own knowledge in, um, and that obviously, as you guys know, there's more joy when you're doing it together, yeah. sharing, yeah. sharing yeah, your sure. together. And um, yeah. so I will be doing shows on my own, but I also would very much like to have guests and, I've always seen it as like, uh, um, you know, with the vision that I had with it, I always saw it like a conscious, like the view. Mm -hmm. You know what I yeah. mean? Like a panel yeah. of a panel of okay. light workers and and bringing different panels in, and uh, but obviously a conscious view. Like if you watch those ladies now, I haven't watched them in years, but I have seen certain things. But yeah, they would be the negative polarity, you know. Right. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, that's what we tried. That was Teresa's idea with our show, mm -hmm. sort of have like the view. So we, but we'd just be the good, the spiritual view, right, Teresa? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so many more are doing that now. Like if you, you know, if you're watching shows, they're actually. This was always the vision of mm -hmm. of bringing light workers and all their skills and all their. It's common unity. 
So it's not surprising that that's now happening. So, yeah, um, yeah I've just felt like I've needed to lay low. I don't know, working behind the scenes. And we've been doing a lot of work, you know. It's 24-7. It's 365 days a week. We rarely get a break. And if we do that, we choose it because we're, you know, a lot of this stuff that's happening uh, on the stage, on the on the world stage, it's putting people into adrenal fatigue mm -hmm. uh, because they're constantly in survival mode. What what it's seeking to do is keep people in the lower chakras yeah. in survival mode. You know that's what fear is. It actually uh, keeps you in survival mode, but it also taxes your physical body, your adrenals. So you'll find that you're more tired, you're more susceptible, your immunity's down. Um, mm -hmm. You know all these things and and the separation we're not meant to be separated right. um so yeah the separation has also been very difficult on people and also seeing our loved ones um even though we may know what's going on seeing our loved ones uh you know their reactions to what's going on um so you know i know kind of when COVID first started my kids were still at school and they came home every day talking and they called it uh, Corona. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm like, we're not calling it Corona. It's COVID. Call it by its proper name. Let's not call it by Corona. Let's call it by its proper name. And so, you know, we need to have these conscious conversations, even with our kids, let them share, but we also need to redirect them and say, look, you know, this is being blown out of proportion. We need to really step back. Yeah. You need to focus on something else rather than just what's occurring around. And, and, you know, we can say the same thing for what's happening in the US at the moment. Um, we always knew that US was going to lead the way with, with the ascension as a country. Um, you know, I was I was told that years ago that you everything needs to happen in the US first because that is kind of the um, that's the rollout for the global. And even though it may appear that uh, there's a lot of separation going on, it's kind of like left and right. Um, Everything's the, going to hell in the handbasket. <laughs> yeah, the, the political parties, great big divide there. Um, Financial system. Black and white. Yeah. Yep, yeah, all of it. All of this, though, anything based on the old system needs to, will be high lit. Mm -hmm. So it will come up and, um, you know, a lot of people are going to find that challenging to navigate. But then if we can hold on to the fact of, um, you know, if any message I can give today, the most important thing I could give would be to say, hold on to that higher uh, vision of why this is occurring. And, and that will be kind of one way to assist staying out of the what's playing out. So it's kind of like if you can think, I'm going to a theatre production. What's playing out is the stage play mm -hmm. and I'm just going to observe it. I might feel different things watching this. It doesn't need to mean I need to get in that stage play and play in it. Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's yes. a good point. All right, okay. so I'm going to put you on the spot. Are you ready for this? This is sure. not the question we're doing at the end, but... I'm feeling like I should be asking you, what can we look forward to with this, you know, midpoint of the year and the midpoint of what's going on? And what about the next six months? Like, what do you see coming in for us then? I see a whole lot more fireworks. Mm -hmm. and, and like, as we've been sure. talking about, people really need to buckle up. They do need yeah. to buckle up. Um, it's from a human perspective, it is gonna get rough. Mm -hmm. especially coming up like a lot of this stuff is about the election right. you know this is about and I don't want to get political because it triggers people and I you know I, I don't want to do that uh not today right uh 
but a lot of this is about the election and in regards to um, the next stage after 2020, because mm -hmm. then we have the 20 to 24 timeline. So, you know, myself, I've been told uh, the most probable outcome of the election and what's going to occur. I'm really holding that vision. Um, you know, something really important is that we, through these gateways, and, um, you know, I'll, I'll put reminders out in my post. They will actually time these things occurring during these important gateway points because that is when we really, as light workers, need to be very uh, balanced, where we need to be holding the higher vision because there is more power to those gateways, you know, the galactic activations. Mm -hmm. So the more of us that can hold that higher vision, um, you know, it's like the hundredth monkey effect. We're, we're really pulling yeah. that gateway into our reality. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I would suggest during the gateways, get out in nature, uh, get out, use all your senses, uh, you know, see the beauty around you, leave the world stage for, you know, for that time period. Just disconnect yourself from that. Uh, there might be personal things that you come in to try to trigger you because during those gateways also, they are testing points. Can you hold the highest vision? Can you stay out of reaction? Can you respond? Mm -hmm. um, you know, can you understand where another is sitting and hold compassion and forgiveness, mm -hmm. even though um, there might be certain things triggering you? So this is all learning, um, you know, particularly for this is coming up a lot for the second and third waivers now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're going through their training ground and mm -hmm. uh, I know, like I, I've thought about this in regards to, gosh, you know, that's challenging everything being thrown at them. But then I also look at like the first waivers, they went through it, didn't have anyone to help them, right. you know, yeah. navigated on their own, the pioneers, because there's the pioneers um, and then there's the first waivers and a lot of people don't talk about the pioneers and mm -hmm. the pioneers are the ones that have been doing this, you know, for decades mm -hmm. um, and, and helping people for decades, you know, in the public arena for decades. They're the pioneers, um, you know, the Dolores Cannons and, and mm -hmm. the Greg Bradens and blah, 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 you know, mm -hmm. all, all those guys. So mm -hmm. they, they were the pioneers, but also, you know, like us all, there's all been different challenges to the different roles that we've played out. So I, I know, as I said, you know, I've thought, geez, to, to go through this training ground, everything that's happening, I'm like, that'd be tough. Yeah. And, you know, this is kind of we're all asked to step up, like, constantly now. And, um, and that's why I'm going back to lives because I'm like, okay, time to step up, time to actually, um, when we have these lives, we're actually holding space for a start, but we're also bringing back in that consciousness of, okay, uh, this crap's going down at the moment, but come here for an hour and step back into consciousness, awareness, mm -hmm. observation, um, so, yeah, I would really recommend um, during the gateway, you know, for, for people to actually just go out in nature, um, really ground on the earth because also what's going to be coming in is a lot of energy. So, therefore, grounding is really important, really anchoring down, remembering the breath, uh, breathing through the energy because otherwise if people aren't breathing it down as humans we shallow breathe 
So therefore, we really want to be conscious with our breath, making sure we're flowing the energy down, uh, clearing our fields often, because when all this turmoil is um, occurring, we need to be clearing. So as soon as we feel it in our, like in our field, and you'll feel it because your body will feel it, you'll be tense, you'll be tight, your emotions will change, you, um, you want to clear. So as soon as you feel that you've had uh, emotionally, you've dipped, mm -hmm. you want to clear, you want to clear your energy. And all it takes is consciously coming back to the breath, clearing out the density and calling in more light. So breathing in the light, breathing out the density. So, and water, like, as you guys know, I'm huge on water. Two showers a day with all this stuff happening, two showers a day, clear morning and night. Because even we'll, we'll be finding, and, and I found this last night, in dream time, I had, um, I had a crazy dream that didn't feel great at all. So as soon as I get in that shower, I'm clearing off even from my astral. Right. You so do a lot of dream work, so that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and last night was crazy. I was like, still trying to. I I haven't really had a chance to kind of dissect what that. It was very more metaphoric, mm -hmm. so I haven't had a a chance to fully pull that one apart yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I still Janelle, use the golden showers that you taught us. Yeah, the yeah. golden sparkle showers. I still, I love that so much. Just to be able to go into that space and feel the golden sparkles rain down on me helps yep. clear so much. And you can have those showers, you know, whenever you need. Like mm -hmm. I know at certain parts in my ascension, um, when I would be having upgrades and, and clearing it because we have density and have upgrades simultaneously. Mm -hmm. There would be days that I, I just would have to get in the bath. I just get in the bath, whole lot of crystals, whole lot of oils, you know, make make a bath for a goddess and just lay in the bath mm -hmm. and, and put some meditation music on to assist me to clear because also when we're having activations, particularly in the skeletal, mm -hmm. it can be really quite painful because it's actually, if you think of it, it's actually a changeover from carbon to um, crystalline. Mm -hmm. So therefore it's kind of, um, it, it's like, uh, to me, it's like an X-Men process. Mm -hmm. It's like, <laughs> and it can, it can be quite taxing on the body. It can actually cause, um, a lot of physical pain to the point where I've had two really big activations where I could not move. Um, one, I had to roll out of bed and I only had it, I think I had it for, I can't remember, I think about three days, but I'm talking, I could not move and was just in oh. hell lot of pain. And I had one recently where um, I'm trying to think what happened with that. I actually took a fall with that one on my feminine side and it was a big feminine clearing and I had not taken anything like Panadol or, you know, any pain relief in years mm. and um, I had no choice. I was like, this is unbearable and I had it, I had that for about three weeks. Mm. It was, it was oh. intense. So it was, um, you know, and that's the thing. We don't want to put that stuff in our body, but by the same token, like I got to day three, um, went into day four, and I'm like, okay, because I was expecting yeah. the pain to lessen, mm -hmm. and uh, it just increased, and I'm like, that's it. I'm biting the bullet. And so I took pain relief, and, um, you know, we'll, we'll try to do – what's in our toolbox to mm -hmm. actually alleviate that, which is our baths and, and you know, the oils. And um, eucalyptus is a really big oil I want to stress to people that is amazing. Yeshua gave me that years ago. Mm -hmm. I, I've i only really started fully using it. And um, through all the clearings and where I put it is basically um, on the – the heart chakra and the higher and the higher heart chakra, front and back, because we have a front door and a back door, and also on your feet. Mm. So rub it on your feet. And oh, so all these clearings the children have been having uh, that as well, 
and, you know, that's what I do with them. And, and I'll actually add my own blends to it as well. So I'll make my own blend up intuitively. Um, and what I felt at that time with that clearing, I did the essential oil of uh, eucalyptus mm -hmm. and I also put spirit of a woman in there because mm -hmm. it was a feminine clearing. So therefore, um, bring the rose in, the rose ray, really kind of bring that essence in, the feminine essence. I like that. Wow. So I Chanel, love that. I, just, mm. I just want to, because we're getting close to the end, I want you to sort of tell us, now do you do, you do services? Do you do readings for people? Do you, what do you do? Like, um, I know you, you used to, but I don't know if you're doing that anymore. So yes, kind of I'm, promote I'm still yourself doing here. them. Um, I do my private sessions on my business page, which is also called Janelle Cameron. Um, and we'll get the links up in the video. So if they're not there now, but I'll make sure they're in there when we download this and, and upload it again. So for our audience, the links will be there to go to you. Right. So, awesome. so yeah, so I'm doing my private sessions. I'm also, um, I'm still working on this, designing this course that I really want to get out. And, and once again, Spirit's giving me a kick up the bum with that. <laughs> so I've started kind of working on that again. Um, and I'm also looking at uh, what's come in recently is, uh, I, I think you guys might have seen it. I don't know if you all did. I, I think Rhonda might have. Basically, I, I did a... I posted the other day and I realized it was a script for a meditation. Mm. So I, yeah, so I'm going to be doing some meditations as in to assist people to clear very quickly um, because this is what we need to be able to do. This is kind of what we need to bring in, assisting um, with all this that's coming. We need to be able to assist people to clear really quickly. And um, I'm also uh, been asked to be a show host um, on Awoken TV. Awesome. So I'm going to be doing that. So um, I'm going to be doing my own lives, but I'm also, so I'm going to be pre-recording mm -hmm. um, those shows on Awoken TV. And um, yeah, I've got a lot to do. Got always. To do. <laughs> You're always busy. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be concentrating on that. And also what I realise is what's coming in because what's been coming in really strongly for me is once again um, the financial deconstruction. Mm -hmm. So I'm really feeling kind of we're progressing to a time where um, I did a post recently, you know, start, if you are aware of your soul mission and things that you need to be creating, this is a time to this time now and I'm not talking in uh, old terms as in going against the flow when you feel that uh, creative energy come in that's when we work mm -hmm. we don't push through anything um, you know anymore and and that was something that came in quite some time with the divine feminine energies of when we need to rest because some of this energy floors us mm -hmm. you know you, you won't get out of bed for a day you right. just be like laying there going oh my god <laughs> you know the exhaustion if we push against it that's when and i've done it i've done it i've pushed against it many times mm -hmm. and that is when we get short with people because we're tired mm -hmm. and when we're tired we're short it's harder for us to stay conscious because we're just we're, we're exhausted so it's kind of like, you know, anything will be, and you'll watch the children are always so high vibe. When we're low, mm -hmm. they're, <laughs> yep. they are crazy. And <laughs> but what they're doing, they're holding the field. Mm. But it can be quite challenging because we also have noise sensitivity. We've got sensitivity to smell. Like this morning when I woke up, my smell was crazy. And, and this is happening a lot. You smell would be so amplified, anything that smells bad. And um, I was putting my bins out this morning and it smelt and I nearly threw up. Mm -hmm. I, I'm like, and, and my kids, 
they think it's hilarious. They're like, mum, they're like, why do you have to throw up all the time? And I'm like, I'm keeping it down. I'm keeping it together. I'm like, and then I had to put the kitty litter tray out and I'm just like. Oh, right. mm -hmm. oh it's you know, so so, you know, so these are our sensitivities yeah, on yeah. amplification. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and, and this is what gateways will bring as well, like, you know, a higher intuition, uh, ampl amplification of all our senses, which our spidey senses, which is our, you know, our, oh, I can't get that word out. Our, yes. There is sometimes <laughs> I cannot... Like, and that's the thing, words, certain words are actually some days, words will not be there. It'll mm -hmm. be like, it's like, bleh. You know, so <laughs> on those days, we can't push through things. Like, say if you think, okay, I'm going to go and do a live tomorrow and you're having one of those days where you're just, you cannot put a sentence together. Mm -hmm. Don't feel bad in actually say, you know, you guys have someone booked. Like if you're all feeling like that, it's different with the three because you can work as a team to assist the others or, or assist the other who's having that kind of day. But when you're doing it on your own, it's, um, you know, it's like <sighs> I'm just not there today. <laughs> Yeah. You know, so so to actually cancel, what you will probably find is, is uh, you know, the person that you, you're going to cancel with or not cancel, postpone with, um, they could be having one of those days too and, mm -hmm. and be going, oh, I really don't want to do the show today. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's the thing for me. I don't want to be, um, and I, a lot of the reasons why I did stop the lives was there were some days I felt that I just couldn't show up for others I had to show up for me yeah. and and to push through that and I was speaking to uh Laura who is you know um who is kind of uh the the manager for Woken TV mm -hmm. or you know the creator the creator of Woken TV um I was speaking to her and she, we, you know, she was saying back when you used to say things um, on your show, she's like, I was very, you know, I got very triggered and I just wasn't ready to hear them. And I'm like, mm. well, that's the thing. You know, we will, we will, we will have points where we are um, not ready for them and, and then we'll shift our consciousness and, and we'll, shift our evolution and then it's like okay what she was saying I now get yeah. you know it, it's whether or not we're soul ready to hear those things and that's okay it's okay and that's why a lot of people will say when they're you know providing information they'll, they'll say uh take what resonates and dump the rest exactly because yeah. it might be down the track at that point you know at that point for you <laughs> You're not ready to hear that. And, and I feel a lot of people are going to have that, yeah. you know, particularly with President Trump. Right. Um, there's been so much programming, particularly with you guys in the US. The programming is crazy because I view it all. I go and purposely view it. And I'm like, okay, what are they selling today? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we've got to remember these people are salesmen. Right. They all have a narrative and it's the same one because the six companies that own mainstream media are all owned by the same people. Mm -hmm. exactly. So you're going to get the same narrative. Yeah. Research yeah. for yourself. Research yeah. for yourself is the most important thing. And another important thing with um, Ascension is discernment. And mm -hmm. there's so many different levels of discernment. I know people don't like turning off the news. Well, then I'll be uninformed. I don't think that's true. You'll be, I think you get more, more informed. Yeah. More, yeah. Well, you get ill-informed by listening to mainstream media. Especially the television news. Like, reading's different yes. than, than, than Yes, listening. I was just about to say that. 
it's and even yeah. Yeah, yeah, even it's the different. video is different than watching it. So yeah. it's a whole different deal. That's the thing is, and it's a stimulus to us, right, because the programming from the TV, the black box programming, mm -hmm. is totally different because it's engaging more of our senses. When we read it, we're not so emotionally invested. Because yeah. also if you think about it, when you read it, you're not hearing the emotion behind another's voice, yeah. their modulation yeah. changing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, this has all been researched. They researched this. This is, they know how to program people. And, yeah. you know, what we're mm -hmm. doing as uh, those on the ascension path we're deprogramming. That is why many of us stepped away from TV altogether. Um, you know, I only kind of went back to TV, I think, since I've lived here. And and my spirit was calling me. At first, I, I was watching movies. My spirit was calling me to watch certain movies again mm -hmm. and to have a look at them from uh, my higher viewpoint. So, you know, mm. I started going crazy watching all the Marvel movies. Right. There's so many messages in the movies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my kids would listen to music and I would find certain music really triggered me. I was like, you need to turn that off. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't want you. And triggered's probably the wrong word. It was, I had a reaction to it, definitely. So it was a triggering. But I was like, I do not want you listening to that. And there was, there was one song recently uh, one of my daughters was listening to and she was doing all these actions and, and TikTok has become mm -hmm. Facebook for children. Now, holy crap, there's a lot of programming in there and there's a lot of adults on there yeah. doing the programming. Um, you know, the stuff that the children are seeing at such a young age, it's so sexualized. It's, you know, that, that for me... Um, I can't wait for that to change. I can't wait for them no longer to see all this bullshit of sexuality disconnecting them from true sexuality. Right. Um, right. But don't, yeah, don't get me started there. <laughs> okay. That's a whole nother okay. show. So, um, back to, exactly. Yeah. So, Bex, you have a one one final question for Janelle tonight, um, which will be to me. And so, um, what what is that question? All right. So, if you had to choose a song to be the theme song of your life, what would it be? Um, for this point in my life, and I feel it's not only just for me. I actually think it's us, the collective, and what we've got to look forward to, as in. Um, I feel it's going to be the fruition. I actually see us kind of, um, I see us having this collective party when this is all done and mm -hmm. all over the world is the song for me by ELO. Awesome. It's, uh, nice. you know, kind of when this truly shifts from, when this truly shifts and, and more actually uh, are anchored in the higher timelines, I, I really feel that as our collective theme song. So mm. for me, yes, that song has been playing on uh, replay and it's very high vibrational. Have a listen. It's awesome. Mm. And... Um, and it talks about the party. It talks about the collective party. So, yeah. So I'm that ready one. For that. I'm ready for the party. Yeah. <laughs> ready Get for there. the party. I'll be involved. <laughs> That'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much for hanging out. What an awesome, awesome hour we've had with you. Almost an hour. It's been yeah. so oh, much information. Amazing. Yeah, and as yeah. we could talk for hours. <laughs> Always. It's hard to stop yeah. now, but. <laughs> well, but now we have the technology to bring you back in a normal time of day, even though we have to pre-record it. It's it's so much easier for you. So yeah. we'll have to do awesome. this again. And I'll, um, mm -hmm. I'll jump on there after the show. When does it air your time? Um, it's my time Monday. Uh, it'll be, 
Yeah, it'll be uh, your 2 yeah. a.m., right? Two, on Monday. 2 a.m. Monday. Yeah. So will, check it out later. I will. I'll jump on there. Yeah. I'll jump, there. Yeah. I'll jump yeah. on there next Monday. And if anyone's got any questions or, um, you know, anything they kind of want to bring up and, you know, sharing your thoughts, I'll, um, I'll jump on there and, yeah, try to leave some responses. And um, yeah, that must be awesome. so nice to connect with all three of you again. Yes. And uh, I've missed you guys. We've missed you Love too. Love you guys. It's and it's always a stick pleasure. Around yes. Absolutely. Yeah, stick around after we Absolutely. Stick around after we get it. Yeah. Go and ahead. for everybody watching, we will be posting the winner of this week's Share It Out in the comments. So don't forget to check that out and make sure you share because sharing is love, sharing is caring. And, you know, as long as we can keep holding the space for the high vibe to come in, the higher timelines to anchor in, you know, we're all doing our part. So we appreciate all of you for hanging out and watching. Right. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thank next you. week we have Brian Bland and Christina Schwind coming on to bring through some really interesting information, right, Teresa? She finds the most Sasquatch. fascinating people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sasquatch and I'm hoping to see him in Mount Shasta. Yes. But I'll well, be there in Mount yeah. Shasta. See? You guys are going to have to hold you, You'll be having your own experience there. Across the border. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. If you get across the border, I'll be yeah, just coming home that day from Mount Shasta. So I'll miss oh, you guys. Nice. But I know. So we, we're hoping. Yeah. So far, hoping. my planes are running. So I'm not. Yeah, we're hoping. So thanks, everyone. And we'll see you next week. Have thanks. a blessed week. God bless everyone. Bye. -bye.